it going, everybody? Leveling Diecast here. Diecast Hall, episode 49, big 49. We are getting closer to that 50 mark. Kick it off with a couple of M2 trucks. I have already uh, cracked them open because it just makes it a little bit easier. I had no idea there was a Turtle Wax version for the Dodge pickup. So I uh, did pick that one up today. Pretty happy about that. It looks pretty average, just has Turtle Wax on the side. It is the uh, W Series trucks, those 4x4. Four four, so that one is pretty good looking. So throw that guy down there. I do anticipate we'll fill up the whole shebang. Uh, another release. This is a standard release for the uh, Dodge pickup. This is the uh, pick em up. Dodge pick em up. This one looks pretty good. This is also the lifted one. I really like the uh, retro graphics and stuff on here. It looks good. The 4x4 four four ones are the best. Wheels look good. It prints a little bit, a little bit left to desire on the on the sidewall there, but that's okay. It still looks pretty good. So throw that guy up in there. Uh, got one slammed version. This is the Ram Chargers. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, people are finding with this one is that the lettering is extremely far off. But uh, I assure you, when you take it out of the uh, package and you unscrew it from the base. Um, it kind of levels out a little bit, and the print looks a lot better uh, going from the body to the uh, bed. So that Ram Chargers there. Of course, just, you know, Ram Chargers. Got Hemby there on the top. Pretty standard deal. I like the wheels. Looks good. Looks good with chrome. Pretty standard fare, but this one looks pretty good. So pretty happy about that one. Put the slammed one up there. Uh, let's see here. A couple of... This one is a straggler left over from the DK's. I did not have the regular, the 500 or the 560 SEC AMG. This would be your super this year uh, for the DK. If this was a super, but it's not a super. Uh, I actually already have this super. Bought it from those nice gentlemen in Malaysia months ago. So that was one super I really, really wanted. This is just the mainline version, but looks equally good. AMG on the back, 560 SEC. Looking very, very good. Looking very proper, so we'll throw in. I'll uh, put them on the bottom. I'll put them right there. There you go. Uh, what else we got going on here? I uh, picked up one of the Easter cars from Hot Wheels. Uh, this is the Ford Escort RS 1600. I do collect that casting, so I figured I'd pick it up. There is the other uh, mix there. Of course, the Impreza seems to be relatively popular since it's the closest JDM thing. So um, this one does sport that new kind of like. Um, hub wheel with like a little bit of four spokes in there. I think it looks pretty good. Got a rabbit on the side. The uh, interior is part of the uh, lights there in the front, which is always interesting. This one looks pretty good though. It's I mean it's 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 Easter themed, so it's not exactly going to be something fancy, but uh, just another version to throw in a plastic case and probably never ever look at ever again. All right, I picked up just a couple models from Neon Speeders. You can see this card is destroyed. Um, I actually found this one hanging on the pegs. 95 Mazda RX-7 Drift, formerly uh, just an ID car. Of course, you guys already know the mix on the back. The only other one that I really care about is the uh, uh, Eclipse, which I do have. So we will take a look at the Eclipse next. This is going to be relatively old news for most everybody. On the planet because these have been out for a little bit but they've been impossibly hard to find this one looks okay with the blue window you can see the window is part of that vent for the hood so definitely looks a little bit weird but i like how the uh front bumper is all you know body worked up and in reinforcement and stuff like that after all it is a drift car tail light prints look good i really like that detail there is your muffler out the back the wing is metal looks good Prints look good. Wheels look good. They are color matched wheels, which is not always something you see on the um, on the neon speeders. But for that case, we do have them. Here is the uh, Eclipse. Again, the only one that I really cared about. Um, not a not a huge JDM fan. We've gone over this, but I really like this casting. I think the Eclipse looks fantastic, so I do like this one. So we'll go ahead and crack this guy open. Get our Eclipse going. This is a matte finish for the orange, which looks pretty good. Full front prints on there look pretty good as well. Color matched wheels in pink. Very uh, 90s flare. Got a little bit of sparkle there in the fender as well. Full tampos on the back. 
Uh, just basic though with the uh, red red print with your Mitsubishi logo in there. But uh, nice to see this one. A little bit more obtainable. Something out of a full-blown uh, premium. It's not exactly not premium, but it's not full-on, full-on premium. I uh, got some older Hot Wheels as well. This is the mini truck. This is the seven spoke for the uh, kind of the uh, cheetah style one for the Roar and Rod series. Um, I did not have the seven spoke version, so I'm really happy to get that. I feel like that's probably one of the, the hardest wheel variations for this particular release. Um, it's not the rarest one for the mini truck, but uh, it's it's definitely tougher. But uh, you know, a lot of people don't don't collect these older Hot Wheels. So um, I'm pretty happy to be able to even have an avenue to try to find these. So it looks pretty good. It's just your average mini truck just with the seven spokes. I'm really happy about that. Happy to add that one to the mix. All right, the forklift. So I have this one with the five spokes in the front, but not with the black wall. So now I have this one with the black wall. So get this one maybe cracked out. Oof, a blister is all together in there there we go Put that other there is your forklift does have a little bit of tilt on the front it's not exactly necessarily meant to tilt but uh there's some play in the plastic parts and then it does lift up a little bit not a lot but just a little bit looks pretty good metal base on this one china base so there are probably going to be some variations this was originally a caterpillar forklift it did have cat logo on it which was uh, retooled and now that is gone so we'll put him on the top because i already know he's not gonna fit nowhere not really anything anybody wants to stare at or look at all right i am continuing to try to put together some of the shadow jets um the first one i picked up was a new model just like these two are however it had the uh, ultra hots wheel so these ones do not have ultra hot wheels they have two separate wheels I don't know if I'll be able to really show it on the camera. This one has the uh, three-spoke the three spoke wheel. Very difficult to see in there. I don't know if I could get the right lighting. There we go. You can kind of see it right there. But it is the three-spoke wheel. This does have a metal base. Nothing fancy. Just a fantasy car. But uh, kind of cool. And uh, I, like, I like variations. So that guy had the three spokes. In addition to the ultra hots that we started with and then this guy has what i call the double blades uh let's see here maybe the other one had the double blades let's see this one definitely has the three spoke maybe uh maybe i saw this incorrectly in the blister and now i just end up having two of the exact same ones so I'm trying to get the lighting to uh, reflect for us so one Pretty sure this one's the... No, that's a three-spoke in the front. Hmm. That's what's difficult about this casting. is You can't, you just can't get in to see the wheel. But uh, I thought for sure it was a double, double blade in the back. Which, if that's the case, that would be very interesting. Nope, it's just a three-spoke. So there we go. So I looked at it wrong. So it's all right. It was only a dollar. It's a fantasy casting. So I want to go in and uh, dump in for somebody else. Like I said, only a buck. Not a big deal. Uh, last one also needed from the DK, so I did have to buy this second hand. Luckily, I got it for just two bucks, though. The Skyline GTR R33. This is the one that I was most most anticipating for. Really happy to see it back in the main line. I feel like they just don't use this casting enough. Not even anywhere near close to enough. Got Godzilla on the side, pretty common. Black base on this does have some nice print on the back to say GTR. With some tail light prints, not the greatest one, but uh, like I said, it was two bucks. Creates a or fills a hole in my collection, so pretty happy to add that guy in there as well. Another older uh, wheel variation, the MR2 Rally. This is for the 34 uh, Deco one. This one does have the five dot wheels. I did not have this version. Have the uh, black walls, I think. The uh, uh, um, uh, Hot Ones wheels and uh, in silver, I think. And then, of course, the tri-blades um, or double blades, the saw blades, however you want to call it. Uh, but this one is the five-dot wheels. So as I continue to pound away at the variations over time, 
I'm uh, pretty happy about that. So these are getting older and older. Uh, this car was probably probably 92 uh, is probably when that one was was produced. So you're talking, you know, 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago. So getting crazy. Um, also continue to hunt down the shoebox. Um, getting harder and harder to get versions I don't have. I still am missing quite a few though. They are getting uh, into the a little bit more expensive realm. I did not have this particular Wayne's Garage one. This one is in purple with purple wheels. Looks absolutely fantastic. Really, really stoked about this one. I've uh, been looking for this one for a little bit. I have quite a few purple shoe boxes, but not this purple shoe box. It is a matte purple finish. Nice uh, satin finish for the um, gray. It's like a grayish silver for the roof. Looks fantastic. Steely wheels on there in purple with some white walls. Metal base looks very, very good. There is your deets on the bottom. I don't know if that's signed or what the deal is right there. But there it is. Don't really matter to me because it's done in the collection now. And it's already cracked open, so it is what it is. Um, and then I got another basic Hot Wheels here. This one looks all jacked up. It's because the, uh, the canopy part in the back wasn't properly secured on there, which I think I can fix. This is a... Oof, a hardcore brown back uh, troop convoy this has a completely different deco for the camo on there than the current one i have so uh, i will see if i can fix that see the uh, canopy is supposed to actually be underneath the bed so I'll see if i can get that to pop down in there a little bit be a little bit brutal with it looks there we go looks pretty good there put the top back on there now it doesn't look as wonky. It's not perfect, but it doesn't look as wonky. This does say U.S. Army on the top. Matching gray uh, canopy part here on the top. The roof section. Just a black wall. Metal base. Looks pretty good. Rolls perfectly fine. Looks pretty good, actually. So we'll throw that guy up in there. Nice to have some cooler black walls in there. A couple of two-packs. This is the final mix of two-packs. For 2023, these were available at Hobby Dealers. May or may not show up at Target. If they do, they probably won't show up uh, very, very much. Maybe just one wave. Um, but uh, this is this is this is the last wave for 2023. It's not the uh, gold premium labels that we will be moving to. This is the Bugatti two pack. This is two brand new versions of the Bugatti, which is rare to get two brand new versions in a two pack. That is the other two packs. I also have this one we'll take a look at next. Um, I did skip on the Subaru one. I really could care less about that one. That's the only new one that's a re-release from the Boulevard. So these are two brand new. Those are two brand new. So that is why I scooped these up. I'm sure that uh, you guys have all seen these two packs before. Nothing fancy. Nothing crazy. We'll just pull out our Veyron and our Chiron. Get the packaging out of here. Pretty excited about the Veyron. This is the new casting of the Veyron. Looks pretty good. Does have lots of uh, carbon fiber there in the middle. Towards the top looks good. Of course, full prints all the way around. It is premium. Got your EB Bugatti logo there at the back. Tail lights look pretty good. Really like the GT wheels. Looks good on this one. All black. Very, very nice. Print in the grill. With your Bugatti symbol. Black base as well. Get this flipped around the right way. S44 is the day code. So that is one of the uh, oldest day codes we've seen thus far. And uh, something that just barely dropped, which is kind of weird. And then this is our Chiron, which I think is going to be the best version ever. Uh, at least so far. It is five spokes on there. Looks good. Full print prints look good. Silver and black combination looks fantastic. Got your Chiron there on the plate. Your crazy, crazy tail light done up. Exhaust ports looks good. You see down into the engine, there's no additional prints or anything there. I think it looks good with five spokes. You know what you guys think. Um, I liked it with those like Ferrari style wheels too. It looked pretty good. The uh, blue blue one that they did, but that one is pretty nice. Um, definitely stoked about that one. Definitely a good one. But this is going to be the star of the show for sure. Mainly just because it's JDM and because of this wicked cool center casting right here. And the S13 is good too, but the uh, the Sentra is really, really the money maker here. So we'll throw this guy out. He's out. Get the packaging out of there. 
these, these clamshell blister dinghies that they sit in, which is pretty good. So there is our Sentra. That is in a kind of a primer gray, which looks fantastic. I love the white wheels. Looks super good. The stance on this model is perfect. Full prints in the front look absolutely fantastic. Ah, I really, really like this casting a lot. It looks so good. It says 9D1. That is hilarious. That is hilarious for the plate. Looks super, super good. Black painted base, S44. Little print on the uh, windshield there. Looks pretty good. Super street. I'll throw that guy out there. Really, really stoked about that one. That's my favorite of the whole mix. Of everything up there right now, that's my favorite. I love my Dodge trucks. I love the R33. But that thing is just so cool. It's just super, super cool. All right, here is our S13. I'm really digging the two-tone. Not a huge fan of the color of the five spokes. But I love the two-tone colors. Looks good. It is uh, kind of a factory color. I really like that look. It does say Sylvia in the front. Really, really nice. This is a good casting. Really good casting. There is the deets in the back. Says Sylvia. Very, very like that. Ooh. Says uh, Lou, I think, on the back. Maybe for Jimmy Lou. That's pretty cool. So that might be what that's for. The prints look very, very good. This one also gets your little sil uh, Super Street decal right there on the windshield. I'm sure that cost uh, Hot Wheels a bazillions of dollars to do that print. So really, really happy that they went through and actually forked out the cash for that. All right, I got a couple of Matchboxes uh, Gold Challenge. I actually have the entire Gold Challenge set, um, except, like everybody on the planet, the GTO and the F-150 flare side that only came in the 10-pack. Unfortunately, I don't have those two. Still hunting those down. However, there are a few wheel variations that do exist um, from the spiral Tyco wheels into this new five spoke that they moved into. So I currently have the spiral wheels for the F40. See it right there. It looks pretty good. But uh, this five spoke looks way better. Way, way better. So I'm pretty happy to have this one. Um, haven't really been looking for this one per se. Um, kind of just kind of stumbled across it. I got lucky. Um, got hooked up. Definitely got a hookup on it, so pretty happy about it. It's not particularly rare. It's not particularly hard to find. Um, you'll find them pop up on eBay. They just list them as the F40. Most people really would have no idea there's a wheel variation to it, but um, you know, being an ultra completist like myself, uh, that is important to get that done, so we'll throw the F40 in there. I got one more. I actually ended up getting two of the wheel variations. This one is for the Diablo. Again, the ugly spiral wheels, but now I have it in the five spoke. See, that wheel is a little bit up in the wheel well, but uh, we'll get that fixed when we crack it out. Just pop it out. There we go. No harm, no foul. This one does have an opening top. This is not the same casting uh, that Matchbox came out with in the uh, uh, premium set um, last year, maybe the end of 2022. Um, that red one, this is not the same casting. It is a new casting, that Diablo casting. Uh, but it is completely based on this casting. It was kind of their starting point. But again, just the wheel variation. Five spoke from the uh, the spiral wheels. The spiral wheels were just such a terrible wheel. A really terrible wheel. Very terrible wheel. All right, I got one green light. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. I did pick this up from Hobby Lobby. This is for the newest release of Barrett Jackson, the 71 Plymouth Cuda convertible. Uh, this mix has a Chevy truck in it. It's got a Ford truck in it. It's got a Corvette in it. Uh, some other stuff. Other stuff that uh, we just don't collect here at Level M. So we'll chop the blister. Blister is nice and thick. We'll slide our Cuda out of there. Cuda convertible. This is in that really nice uh, like olive green. Looks good. 383 on the side looks good. Got your rally wheels sporting. Got your uh, your uh, grill in there. I'm not a huge fan of that grill. I like the open grill, but uh, it's all right. It's all right. Details on the other side. Again, 383 in the white. This guy does have an opening hood. Just had it. There we go. From an old school green light, this casting's been around for bazillions and bazillions of years. Uh, they've done about, uh, I would say, about three dozen different versions of this casting. Got your Barrett Jackson there on the plate. 
which is appropriate. Again, you know, green light doesn't do plates unless, unless it's appropriate to need the plate. All right, a uh, couple other things here. Did pick up some Zuru metal machines. These are color changers. Uh, we've already, you know, gone over these castings. There's really nothing different. I just got some uh, color changers. These are at Hobby Lobby. So pretty much getting down to the nitty gritty of having pretty much all the Zuru metal machines because why not, I guess. It's not like you can find anything else on the pigs anyway, so... It's fine. It's fine. It's just nothing fancy. Just color changers. Uh, we'll crack those open at some point in time, but we'll save that for another day. It's kind of a kind of a redundancy kind of thing. All right. Hot Wheels has updated their track trucks. They are now called Track Fleet. These are 2024s. Uh, at least I think they're 2024s. Although there's no like special color label for the logo, I don't think that they're doing that for these. But regardless, this is new. Track Fleet. Um, I think they were called Track Stars before, maybe. But uh, this is a recolor for the Turbo Beast. Uh, this is, uh, you know, just a new release for it. Not a new casting, though. These trucks are designed to be able to run on a track with the trailer attached. They do have a ball joint. You can see, that way they can rotate side to side and all that good stuff like that. You still can remove them. They are not fixed. There is the deets on the side says TB2 on there, 62. It does hold a car, so you can put a car in there, although I'm not really sure how much the car would stay in there on the track, but you see there is the ball joint. Metal on the bases, which is good for track cars. This guy has got a really offset cab with some ridiculous quad turbos on it. Just It's just insanity. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like these kind of fantasy trucks. They're just they're so far out there. But I think it looks pretty good. Got those uh, faster than ever wheels on there. It's, it's all right. It's all right. It's got that nice stance on it though, but it rolls. It rolls level, which is good. So get that snapped in there. Here we go. Just kind of stick him to the side. All right, next one. This is also a recolor. This is Track Fleet Part Two. Uh, cargo card, caged cargo. My apologies. Um, I didn't actually have this casting, so I don't know if this is a new color. I just know I don't have this one, so um, just be aware that that might not be new. That is the entire mix on the back. Don't you worry. Yes, we have the two that you're eyeballing. We do have the Scania Rally Truck, and we do have the Bugcation. Um, although this one was not there, the Cyber Rig. So that is a new color for the Cyber Rig, so I'll have to get that one. But just realize that just right now. All right, so Caged Cargo. This one looks good. It's got some like uh, fish on the side with, uh, well, it's got shark, a snake, and a gorilla. So that's kind of interesting with a robotic shark there on the front. Robo Transport, it says. This one is kind of interesting. It's uh, pretty heavy. It's significantly more heavy than uh, most of the track trucks. And uh, there's a lot more metal in it as well. But as you'd expect, being a caged cargo, you can open it up. There you go. And you can put a car in there. It doesn't hinge. There are hinge points at the front here, but uh, sometimes it doesn't. This is, this is as far as it opens. It doesn't open any further. So you just kind of snap it in there. Again, ugh, they do come off. They are difficult. This one is actually a really, really cool uh, Kenworth COE. Um, and it's it's lowered and stuff. It's got engine in the back here. It looks super, super cool. I like this one a lot. I think this one looked really good as a custom. Maybe I'll do one of those someday. I don't know. I just don't have the patience to do customs, but uh, maybe someday because it would look it would look super cool. So throw that guy there. All right, Bugcation. I do believe this is a brand spanking new casting. Bugcation. Of course, it is. You know, designed off a of Volkswagen Bug with an RV section in the back. We we'll get this guy cracked out. There is your RV section in the back. Of course, it's plastic. Looks pretty good. Holds a model as you expect. A couple of, uh, we've got some luggage up there, some tools and stuff like that. Looks pretty good. It is the same on both sides, which looks good. Oof. This one is, oh man. <laughs> Whew. That one was in there. This one is super, super cool. You got a bug which has been slammed to the ground and extended out. Got your front axle out of. 
out in front of the hood looks pretty good. A couple of smokestacks on the back. It's a pretty cool one. It's a pretty cool one. I like that it's still uh, two axles there in the back. And, of course, it does have actual Volkswagen on it. Even though it doesn't actually say Volkswagen on it per se, it just has the shape of a Volkswagen. I'd, I'd say you could get away with this not being a Volkswagen. But it is on there. Get this flipped around there. There we go. Bugcation 2022 Mattel. So this is not, not a brand new casting. So this must be just the first time that I've actually found it. But the, that looks pretty cool because I definitely didn't have that one. But that one looks pretty good. All right. And then the last one from the Track Fleet. Yes, the newest release for the Scania. One of the coolest things that they've ever done. The Scania Rally Truck. This one, brand new version. Yes, it is still designed to run on a track. This one is interesting. It does have kind of a trailer section that comes out, which will hold a model on there. This one does come apart. You see the hitch, hitch is way up at the top. But realistically, what this is really designed to do is just slide up in there. There we go. That simulates the spare tires on the back, like uh, actual uh, day car style truck, which is exactly what this is based off of would do. Full prints on the front look pretty good. It does say Scanny on there. I like the orange window. I think that looks pretty good. There is the print on the side. Hot Wheels Racing. All the things on there. Rad Wolf number 101. Looks pretty cool. I like it. Looks good. Just happy that they're still utilizing that casting and still pumping them out because I think it's super, super cool. All right. The very last item we have in today's haul. I do have a Heartland Haulers. Yes, it is a farm tractor. Yes, farm tractor. Um, picked it up from Hobby Lobby as usual. That is the only place that carries these. Um, I'm sure in other places, other states, uh, the mass of stuff is a little bit easier to find. This is your F-350. It does say Organic Farms on the side. They did print some blue in there for the Ford Oval, but it does not say Ford. There is no interior. This casting has been around for a very long time. There is your base D. It's, of course, made in China because it's always made in China. There is your trailer for the um, tractor. Uh, it does have rubber wheels, but these are these are pretty, like, cheap press-on things. This is something that uh, Ertl pioneered way back in the day. But it uh, looks pretty good. It does have the ramp on there. just hooks onto the back of it like that and just tows it around. comes with a standard tractor. It is not licensed. It's just a regular tractor. Does have rubber tires though, which is pretty nice. Same uh, tires here that are on the uh, trailer as well, and then of course has a hookup for some implementations. Uh, Maesto is coming out with quite a few uh, actual like licensed uh, tractor stuff, so that'll be coming in uh, this year. So maybe I might be able to get my hands on some of that stuff, but uh, that stuff's really not really sold uh, much of it all in the U.S. So there you go. That is diecast haul number forty-nine. Nice big haul there. I uh, thought we'd fill up the racks in the back. I guess I could have cracked the the Zuru's. We would have we would have filled it up in, but um, not a good, not a not a bad mix. Not the greatest mix, but uh, really happy with some of this stuff I got. Especially like those M2 trucks, uh, Bugatti, and uh, that Sentra. That Sentra. This 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 is money, 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 money. So, anyways, there we go. We're gonna roll out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Catch you next time here. Level M. Peace.